from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, February the 8th, 2024. An IDF soldier was seriously injured from an anti-tank missile attack from Iranian-backed Lebanese-based terror group Hezbollah today. The IDF said this morning a number of launches were detected that crossed from Lebanese territory towards the areas of Kiryat Shmona, Birnit, and Hermon in the north of the country. The IDF attacked with artillery fire the sources of the shooting, noting that as a result of the launches, an IDF soldier was seriously injured and two other reservists were slightly injured. The injured were taken to the hospital for treatment. Later in the day, the IDF said that it intercepted a suspicious aerial target that crossed from Lebanon into Israel, and Israeli jets also hit several Hezbollah terror targets later today. A Palestinian terrorist opened fire at an IDF post in the West Bank today. The IDF said a terrorist fired at a force operating in a military position near the city of Nablus, saying the force made contact and opened fire at the terrorist and neutralized him. There were no casualties to IDF forces. And the IDF gave an update on the ground operation in Gaza today, saying that over the past 24 hours, IDF troops have eliminated dozens of terrorists and taken out a terrorist cell that attempted to transfer technological systems to Hamas and apprehended dozens of individuals, including two terrorists who participated in the October 7th massacre. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held additional meetings in Israel today, including with opposition leader Yair Lapid and ministers Benny Gantz and Gadi Eisenkot as well as meeting with family members of some of the hostages still being held captive by Hamas in Gaza, now for 125 days. Speaking to the press last night, Blinken said he discussed with the Israeli government the response that Hamas sent last night to the proposal that the U.S., Qatar, and Egypt had put together to bring the remaining hostages home and extend the humanitarian pause in Gaza. Blinken said, what I can tell you about these discussions is that while there are some clear non-starters in Hamas's response, we do think it creates space for agreement to be reached, and we will work at that relentlessly until we get there. Those non-starters presumably are Hamas's demand for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and for thousands of Palestinian security prisoners to be released from prison. Blinken clearly condemned Hamas and put the responsibility for the conflict on Hamas in his remarks last night, saying Israel is fully justified in confronting Hamas. Blinken also urged Israel to do more to help civilians in Gaza, knowing full well, he said, that Israel faces an enemy that would never hold itself to those standards. And in what appeared to be harsh words of caution to Israel, Blinken said Israelis were dehumanized in the most horrific way on October the 7th. The hostages have been dehumanized every day since, but that cannot be a license to dehumanize others, saying we cannot, we must not lose sight of our common humanity. French President Emmanuel Macron led a ceremony in Paris yesterday for the 42 French citizens murdered on October the 7th calling the Hamas onslaught the biggest anti-Semitic massacre of our century, also paying tribute to three other French citizens still missing, believed to be held hostage in Gaza, Macron pledging that France would work every day for their release. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, February the 8th at 7 o'clock. It's an FIDF live war briefing with IDF Commander Shahar Peled. At 7.30, Benjamin Anthony sits with Iris Chaim, the mother of Yotam Chaim, who was kidnapped by Hamas on October the 7th and tragically killed in a heartbreaking IDF operational miscalculation. At 9, Leah Golden is on the Chaim. Leah is the mother of Hadar Golden, whose remains have been held in Gaza since 2014. At 10, Rabbi Ken Spiro surveys the history of anti-Semitism, 
from the Dark Ages through the Holocaust to present. And coming up next, I speak with co-founder of Creative Community for Peace, David Renzer, about advocacy for Israel from the entertainment industry in the aftermath of the October 7th massacre, including the tribute Sunday night at the Grammy Awards. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, February the 8th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. Am Yisrael Chaim.